am inspired and I've got three finished objects to show you. Um, so I'm just going to get into it because I'm pretty tired and I just want to go to bed. And I've been waiting all day for, all day, all evening for the kids to go to sleep but they decided that they wasn't going to. So it's about nine o'clock at night now and I should just be like dying down to go to sleep. But that's not the case. So um, yeah that's it. So I'm just going to show you what I've done. Right, so this is um, the corner, corner scarf I was making for a friend. So that's all finished. I did it in, well, corner to corner. Um, and then I did, is it two or three? Two double crochet slash single crochet um, border. Two rows border around it. So it's a pretty long scarf. It only used um, two balls of Mariner Sparkle yarn, so it's pretty long and snuggler. So it's not bad that length, is it? In pretty wide too, really. So yeah, I'll go give her that tomorrow, and then my other finished object. Also from Mariner Yarn, this was Mariner Metro in Caspian. That's this top. So it's got the Pico um, edging, edging on the neckband, also the edging on the bottom. Uh, I can't remember where I put that pattern. But yeah, this is it. I'm going to, because the neck's pretty wide and because it's pico so I'm going to do single crochet into the pico, double crochet into the gap or if you UK double crochet treble um, but yeah that's done I used, I've got about 7 grams left out of 300 gram balls so not bad is that? so I will need to go into the fourth to do the neck but I'm fine with that um, and then with the two balls I've got left I'm going to do another one of them scarves and I'm also going to knit a bank head hat so that should cut all that out I'm trying to use all the wool that I buy as I buy it and right now <laughs> I'd say I'm doing a pretty good job I mean that's what 500 grams here of that new wool that I bought so not bad and then my last finished object, <laughs> I'm so proud of this one. This is the one that I was doing for my next door neighbour and it's been ta it's taken me months because I hate it. I hate it, hate it, hate it. But I finally finished it. So there we are. Um, it's a drops pattern in age 5 to 6. So it's supposed to be cable on the front and cable on the back, but I only did the cable on the front because it was pretty annoying. But it doesn't look half bad really, does it? It's a strange construction. You start off at the bottom ribbon and you work upwards to the arms. You stop at the arm opening. Then you knit both sleeves, cuff up, um, in the round. And then you put them on, your knee on the cable, on the needles and then you work going upwards again but decreasing your raglan stitches um, every two rows and then every row and then do your net band so it's pretty strange and um, for the size that I did it calls for DK, uh, DK, DK wool and it calls for 350 grams I used Stylecraft, instead of the drops that they use for this, I use Stylecraft Special DK in the colourway Camel and this is what I have left out of 300 grams. So I did it in almost half the wool. I only needed to break into this for the, the collar ribbon, that's it. The rest was done in just 200 grams and 
it fits my boys a bit bigger than us man so I'm a bit worried after all this I'm a bit worried that my neighbour's going to say no it's too big even though I did warn her because she wants it for a three year old um, so she said do it in four to five so I said well they don't have it in four to five and honestly I don't really want to mess about doing the maths um, resizing the pattern so you can either have it in three to four and my tension's loose anyway so it'll probably end up being like a four to five or the five to six so she just goes do the bigger one <laughs> so I'm like okay so because it's been a few months I'm hoping that the kid's grown a bit <laughs> so yeah that's my third finished object and I'm so happy I got it finished so so happy because I mean you guys know all the time that I've been saying I just want to message her and say I don't want to do it just message and cancel and then every time I pick the phone up to literally I typed out the message and just before I hit send I'd stop myself so I'm kind of proud of myself and I think I only did it because um, she took in some posts for me because I've got one of them light boxes for taking pictures and she pulled me up in the back garden when she was handing me my parcel and she goes have you done that top yet? <laughs> I went, no Eunice, I've forgotten all about it. <laughs> well, I thought that was nicer than saying no, I just don't want to do it. So she goes, alright, but I want it for Christmas Day. <laughs> okay. So I got it finished last night. So it's kind of been good that I had the pressure of a time. Because, honestly, I wasn't going to do it. And the amount of times I kept on thinking, right, I just want to rip out the wool. And if I use it for something else that I'm not going to feel that guilty, and I'll actually send the message that I drafted for her. But I didn't. So proud. So proud. It's so daft what you can be proud of, isn't it? But, yeah, I hated it. And then Jamal saw it this morning. He's like, but I want <laughs> Will you do me one? Because I told him both that. They can pick out wool from ice for a jumper and I'll meet them a jumper. And then Usman gets to pick out two because his birthday is in February. In every year he wants a birthday jumper. Jamal's never that bothered, he tries to make his own. Never happens. He's almost made a cow though. <laughs> but um, yeah, Usman always asks me for a jumper. Always. Two years. <laughs> but um, yeah, so he gets to pick out two. So Jamal goes, well with mine, instead of doing one crochet, will you knit me that one? So I said, no. I said, if this is too big for next door and she doesn't want it, instead of putting it on my shop, you can have it. But I am never, ever, ever making this pattern again. I hated it. <laughs> I hated it, hated it, hated it. And I think part of it was, because you start off at the bottom and then go upwards, that's kind of the bit you look forward to when you're doing a top down top because it goes faster but then you're like it's taken me a while to get up to this part but then I've got to do the sleeves and then I've got to join them and then I've got to do the decreases and then I've got to do the yoke and because it's all these different parts I don't know it just seems like there's more ends to sewing even though there's not it just seems like there is it just seems like the process is a lot more um, because I think if you do all that at the beginning, the sleeves, the increased rows, the parting for the sleeves, I feel like if you do all that at the beginning, you can just fly with the rest. But when you're going upwards, you've got it all to come. In May, I kind of don't like that. But I'm one of these people anyway that if you tell me to do something, I kind of don't want to. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not that I really rebel. I think though, if you notice with me, the patterns that I generally use, I'm kind of, I'm a bit obsessive with, I have a bit of an obsessive personality. So if there's a pattern that I like and that I'll use, I tend to use it over and over. And if you take me out of that, and out of my comfort zone and into something that's strange or, not the way I like, then I rebel 
and then I don't want to do it and then I'm like well why can't you just pick something else um, and I think with drops anyway they're a bit of a pain in the bum to kind of follow so it's called Lucky Jack by Drops Design that's it but so it's a free pattern so I'm not really telling you anything but when you look, the body is written in a big paragraph. Then you've got the sleeves in that paragraph. And then you've got the yoke in that paragraph going on to the other side. But it's just all jumbled together. And I don't like it. I like things with lots of spaces so you, you can break it down. You can kind of checklist each thing. And then you kind of have to rewrite it to a way that suits you it's like i'll add my own notes and i always like every square in a chart once i do that row i'll fill out a square so i know where i am all the time but then you have to rewrite like that was the decreases because i've never done decreases in that way i had to kind of take it out of the paragraph and put it somewhere else so it's more visually pleasing it's visually a lot more simple so yeah that is that um and it's got do you need help with this pattern <laughs> and then it says you can find 27 related videos on this available on this patterns video tab um on the gan studio website the drops website <coughs> We take pride in providing patterns that are correct and easy to understand. <laughs> Sorry, but they're not easy to understand at all. Um, in the videos, they're not actually much help. Um, I think the most help they could give is like using more paper, put spaces in between each thing. Like I don't care if I have to print out five sheets, six, seven sheets because you're not using more ink, it's just more paper. You use the same amount of ink, you just space it more. And it'd just be a lot easier. Like, I'd rather use the extra paper. Or even if I was being tight and I didn't want to use the extra paper, I could do back-to-back um, -back sheets. So yeah. But anyway, I don't really bothered about that, because look, that whole back sheet, was on about a sale that was having on drop so it can't be about paper anyway that's my article rant over with but yeah i just i kind of thought it was a bit funny how it said for this size that i did they needed 350 grams and i only just broke into the third hundred gram um so yeah that's it i do need to start work on the three to six months baby cardigan and hat set but that's from a tutor in college so and I'm not back in college till the 10th of January so I've got plenty of time for that um, I had another order for a baby another drop pattern <laughs> um, but I've made this one before and it's crochet I find drops crochet are a lot easier to understand so I'm doing that set for a newborn and I'll be doing it in these colours, the same colour as I did the last set um, so that's easy, I didn't have to rebuy the wool uh, and I started another pattern today so you know like I'm saying the patterns that I know and like I do over and over like them two baby um, cardigan things the hat I just do a bank head baby size you know me I like my bank head and also um, this top that I'm doing now it's an Oana's creation Oana Bonacorsa um, if you don't know her she's like kind of a bit of a YouTube legend you know with her own pattern tutorials and stuff but she does it all in kind of a recipe so she'll tell you like do so many chains for your shoulder to shoulder for your back but make sure it's um, in a multiple of three 
and then divide it by three and what you get you cut you do the chain for the sleeves in that and then yeah so she just gives you the recipe so you can do any size you want it doesn't matter she's teaching you it all in one go so she was um kind of the one that got me into making tops like i'd always watched Jan's videos and i'd always loved the tops that she made but i was always scared of doing them in i'd watch a lot of video tutorials you know just to kind of get get to grips on it because when you first do something it's always daunting you always think it's going to be harder than it really is because tops is really easy um so yeah it was only when i watched hers that i made my first top and then two other people wanted it like i made one for my friend's daughter's birthday and then i made one for my mum one from um the my friend's daughter i made one for one for her mum because she liked it um then i did one for me <laughs> so yeah i am a bit obsessive about the patterns that i like so I'm doing one again, um, so this is the crochet top down pullover, it's called, and there's a YouTube video tutorial on it. And I'm doing it in the style, Stylecraft Twilight in Plum, I think this is Plum. Um, DK weight, I'm doing it on a 4mm hook, she says to do it, she does a DK weight. Um, on a five millimeter hook, she said that the fabric's stiff, so you need the bigger hook. But because I crochet quite loose anyway, I get the same kind of effect with the four millimeter. The one that I did for me, I did it on a five millimeter, and the fabric just dropped and it turned from a tunic into a dress down to my knees. Um, so yeah, I'm doing this one on a tighter hook. If I like it at the end of it, I'll keep it. If I don't, oh, I don't know. I'm not really a glittery person. I don't do glitz and glamour. But I do kind of like the colour of this. If if it was this colour and without the glitter, I'd definitely make it for me. But if I like it once it's all done, and if I don't think that the glitter is too much, I mean, because that is too much for me. But that doesn't really look glittery next to it does it not too much so anyway if i like it basically i will keep it if not it's just gonna go in my shop oh, sorry i've been winding um the a lot of wool that i'm going to be using in patterns coming up that i want to make i've been winding the wool into cakes so now i just feel like fluffies everywhere and i just keep needing to sneeze uh, that's about it that is it Jamal had his first his last day in school today for the holidays us man broke up last week I broke up last week uh, and that is it got nothing else for you with all I had a sickness bug tummy bug um, the night before, well Sunday night, Sunday we went to my mum's, the boys helped to put up the Christmas tree and then because it's like a couple of hours away, um, bus travel and it, with it being a Sunday as well, we have to get two buses there, two long bus rides and then um, with it being a Sunday, the buses are kind, kind of rubbish. Um, in some cases you have to wait like over half an hour and then you get to the night time and you have to wait an hour in between buses and it's just no good so I got a taxi home um, but as we were getting in the taxi it was raining dead bad and I could hardly see out of my glasses so I opened the car door and I didn't realise Jamal was there so I opened the car door into his face <laughs> so he's got kind of a big lump and a bruise there but he'd com been complaining like all the night before and all that day at my mum's even had to lie down in my mum's bed saying that he was feeling poorly. Um, <laughs> so he's kind of falling asleep in the taxi and I was there trying to slap his face to make him wake up because obviously head injury you can't go to sleep in case of concussion. Kept on trying to sleep and then we got home, 
what's in the front room bleh, just puked all over the floor. It's disgusting. Um, and then he just ended up crashing and I kept trying to wake him up and he kind of, he'd wake up but then that would be it so I just kept a bit more of an eye on him. Said that he wasn't hurt and he wasn't feeling dizzy or anything, he just wasn't feeling well. And I thought, well, he kind of wasn't feeling well anyway. A lot of people in his school wasn't feeling well. So, I just let him have a bit of a rest. And then, the next day, he said that he still wasn't feeling well and he was still throwing up. But because it was a school assembly, he wanted to go in school. And I was like, no, you can't go in today. You just can't. And then he was begging, he was like, please, mummy, please, it's the first time in the big school, I need to go, I need to sing for everyone, I need to do my assembly. So I was like, okay, go on, go in. So it was dead icy on the road, and obviously I live in Cheatham Hill. It's Hiller, <laughs> that's where the name comes from. Um, so we ended up sliding a bit down the hill. <laughs> it ended up being like an you know, ice skating rink, but it was like black ice. There was no snow, it was frost there, but it looked black on the tarmac. You couldn't see which parts that you could walk on. Um, so we kind of went flying. Us man went flying first. So then I gripped onto him, but I tried to grab him as well with that hand. Then I went flying. Us man let go of me, but he was that near the floor he didn't think to save himself either and I was trying to grab him but because I was falling I was at a weird angle and then all you heard was a big thud his face smashed on the floor so got him into school I said right sit down because there's kind of couches and then there's um there's about seven stairs to get onto a platform that leads into the double doors that goes into their tiny little corridor for two of the classes, two of the classrooms. So I said to him, just sit on the sofas um, and just rest there I'm going to go catch the mile up and take him in and explain to his teachers that he's not feeling well. So I was like, okay. So I rushed back out to him and then um, he was with a teacher with an ice pack on his face. So I like, said hello to her and that and she was asking what happened so I explained. And then um, she goes, you know, you know what, he's dead good, like, he saw me standing there with my high face vest on and he just came up to me and said that I'm hurt, can you help me? And she goes, not a lot of kids would do that, it's, it's dead big of him and I was like, yeah, um, he knows to ask for help. I think with me not being that well sometimes as well, I kind of, I teach them where to go for help and I should always get help in case something happens to me. Um, so yeah, I explained that to her. But then she took the ice pack off his face and his face was swollen out here. <laughs> and us man goes red sometimes, but because he's darker skin than me and Jamal, he doesn't go red like us in the same way. But he was red in the same way. <laughs> and it was already going kind of purple. And... You know what, it's terrible and I'm smiling about it, but he kind of looked that adorable. Like, us man gets too big for his boots at times and sometimes you forget his age. And because he looks so vulnerable, it was kind of one of them moments like, he's my baby again. I don't know if I'm coming ac across right, but I don't know, sometimes you do forget his age. And then he looked his age and it was just, it was so sad, but it was so sweet at the same time. So the teacher gave him um, a sticker and he kept asking for more so she ended up just giving him the sticker book um, and that's it we went home. Sorry I just had a message. So yeah, um, so Jamal came home that night after the assembler. And he did a really good job in the assembler. I did take a video. I was going to add it on to the end of this, but the schools asked that we um, we can share it with family and friends, but don't post anything on social media. So that's fair enough. So I'm not going to. But it was so adorable. Um, and he got home and he was throwing up again. He seemed to be fine that day in school, but he was sick again. And I started feeling full the next day. So did us, man. So for two days, he didn't go to school. 
and then he went in for the last day today um, he's still not feeling quite well but he's not too bad either um, so we've got lots of yogurts and ice cream coming in the Iceland delivery tomorrow because we're all getting sore throats and that's about it I've got two weeks with both kids at home <laughs> I miss them when they're at school but I'm kind of I don't know whether to dread it or whether to be happy <laughs> I'm happy that I'm getting more time but I'm also dreading it because I kind of I like to have my little pockets of peace and since Jamal's been in full time school I'm getting little pockets of peace and then when it's the holidays I do realise how much I like having them time uh, and that's about it I'm going to take them out for some toys tomorrow because I'm hoping if they get a couple of new toys they won't be as bad for the first couple of days because they kind of none of us like change and we don't adapt well to change especially Jamal he's he's very much a routine kind of person like myself and if he's out of that routine he doesn't know how to adapt quickly like two different sets of rules at school and at home in he's kind of a bit of a nightmare at times on the weekend because it's a different structure and he's not used to it just five days at school with their structure by the time he gets home and he has his tea bath it's time for bed so other than tea and bath there's no routine really um because it's so close to bedtime so then at the weekend he kind of struggles same as the holidays he struggles so when he struggles mama struggles <laughs> and they play off each other and that is definitely it and I am going to go because I think it's nearly half an hour that I've been rambling on now and I could have finished it six minutes after I'd shown the stuff that I've made so I'll probably show you this again next time when I've done the adapting it's just a shame about this because you do it from the bottom up so you kind of do the chain for the widest part of your and the widest part of me at the minute is my hips so then when I go up and there's no shaping on it it's just straight so when I go up and I do for the size it ends up being massive so I'm just going to do my own little ledge thing and take it in because I do think it looks nice with this blue dress so why not should have changed my scarf though, shouldn't I? I've got a navy blue scarf that I was going to wear. But I couldn't be bothered. This one was what I saw first. And I don't care about fashion. I wear what I wear. If it covers me, it's all good for me. <laughs> right, I'm going to go. Um, I probably won't see you before Christmas. That's Monday, innit? Yeah, so I hope you all have a very, very nice and wonderful Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I just hope you have a good day anyway. Um, yeah, we don't celebrate Christmas, but my family does. So I'm kind of... I don't know, I'm not like a Scrooge or a humbug when it comes to Christmas. I just, I'm starting to introduce little bits every year. Because I want my kids to know what's our religion. And then what's kind of culture within the family. And for us, Christmas would be culture within the family. Um, yeah, because we never went to church or anything on Christmas. It was always about having food with the family and everyone got together no matter what. So, yeah. So, they helped my mum this year with decorating the Christmas tree. And us man baked her um, a little thing with doll to hang on the tree. And I'm going to knit her a bauble because she lost a lot of, um, a box went missing with all her old family, like her grandma's baubles and this, that and the other. It was like stuff that was just kept on being handed down. But it's gone missing so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make her one every year. And then she can just start again. I know it's a bit sad for her but what else can you do? So yeah, um, yeah. 